Yo, 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 what's good? It's your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Um, excuse the lighting. My lamp is not working in here. Uh, it's one of those lamps that I plug in. I don't have great lighting in my office. So I actually have the light on in here. You would never know. But I have one of these like uh, these rings that you plug into the computer. And that's usually my light source. And it's not working. So uh, obviously I got to get a new one. That's just how things are sometimes with the lounge. That's just how it be sometimes. So um, I'm actually using my my cell phone flashlight as uh, the lighting. So my apologies, my apologies that this looks kind of dark. Obviously, it's not real sexy for you as the viewer here on YouTube on the lounge. So I want to throw out there real quick. Um, this is about a 90% decision um, come Jan January 2023. Uh, you will not be catching the Cool Factor or my podcast or anything from the channel on any streaming platforms anymore. Uh, everything will be strictly on YouTube. So that's a um, fair warning. It's about 90%. Uh, that's the direction I'm going with it. And I apologize because not everyone has. Like, I pay for the YouTube. I don't even know what it's called. The premium service. Well, I don't have ads, you know, and I know not everybody has that. So it can be a little frustrating because I know with me, I can just minimize the app and listen to what I want to listen to. So YouTube's not always the optimal platform for everybody, but uh, that is the decision. Um, don't don't unsubscribe from those platforms because uh, down the road, I may be revisiting that, but most likely January 2023, uh, the Impact Lounge here on YouTube will be the only place to be for any of our content. So I'm going to talk impact you know i go through it a little quicker when i'm by myself um let's talk about some other stuff first though uh jonathan gresham is uh reportedly signed with the company and this is a good thing because you know impact has a good track record and a good history of employing husbands and wives you know and i think that's a good thing to keep especially when one of them is one of your top stars i think it's important to keep them happy you know um, and, you know, and I said this once upon a time when they released Diamante, I was like, now Kiara wasn't one of the top stars at the time, but I think she was someone that they were trying to build around to an extent. It was one of their few like actual homegrown talents. And I was like, I don't see that, you know, the benefit in releasing, um, one half of a couple, you know, because eventually that, uh, that other half is probably going to leave too. And especially going to try to join them if they go somewhere else. And, you know, that's what happened. That's pretty much exactly what happened. So we've seen it a couple other times. You release one half and the other half's eventually going to bounce as well. So I think because I feel that Jordan Grace is someone that they have to really hitch the wagon to keep around for as long as possible, because I think she's a, you know, she's a star. She looks more and more like a star every time she comes out there, especially if you compare her to how she used to look uh, when she first joined the company. She's two different people. You know, and she's probably the first person to tell you that physically, she's just two different people. But she, right now she looks like a, you know, absolute star. Like when they signed her initially, I was like, oh, you know, she had a little showing in the the AW um, casino battle royal for the women. So, you know, they brought her over to try to get a little buzz, whatever. But they they have really built her into something a uh, bit of a homegrown talent as well. You know, because we haven't really, with the exception of that AEW appearance, we haven't really seen her anywhere else. So she's someone you want to keep around, someone you want to lock down. Again, I apologize for this darkness. I just, I keep looking at myself. I'm like, man, I'm just sitting here in the dark, basically. Um, I'll have it fixed for next time I record. I'll, <clears throat> I'll order a, a new um, a new light ring. So bringing Gresham aboard, I think, is um, really good for that reason. But I also think as far as what he can do with Impact, you know, I thought his matches, everything he did with Impact was really good. Impact's one of those companies that you can be of a smaller stature and it, and you can make it work. Like you can be world champion. You know, Rich Swan was the champ. I know a lot of people didn't really care for it, you know, because he was constantly being compared to Moose at the time. Um, but, you know, Gresham could could win the title, you know. Uh, just like he did in Ring of Honor, he could be world champion, he could be X Division champion, uh, he can do, he could be tag team champion with someone because you know, you know how this division is. They're just going to throw people together. So 
he can hold every title. He can work in the bottom of the card. Hopefully not the bottom, but I mean, you know, I mean, he could. He could do the middle of the card, the top of the card, and do an excellent job with all those things. So I think it's a really key addition because he can be a top guy. Maybe in AEW, who can be a top guy? And you know, Impact has a much smaller ring. It's a smaller, um, you know, they do smaller venues. So he, his size does not stand out the way that it would in a much larger ring, you know, but he's also, you know, in tremendous shape. And I think that makes up for a lot of it as well. I mean, if you think of a guy like pack, he's not a, he's not a tall dude, but he's jacked. So you just forget that when he's in the ring, you know? So, um, I think this is the perfect place for him. I think it's great for keeping, um, Jordan grace happy. And we're under the impression he's around, for at least another like year and a half or so. That's kind of what we've been led to believe with some of the rumors and things out there. We don't know what's true, what's not true. We have no clue, but I look forward to seeing him around. You know, I first saw him on a, what was that? Not Destination X, but they used to do the um, the one night only X Division show. They had the, it was kind of like Knockouts Knockdown where they would have like the, the aspiring X Division stars come out. And I don't even know how many of those they did, but I know the very last one they did, he was a part of it. And he cut a promo after. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it on YouTube somewhere. And he's like, I'll be back, Impact Wrestler, TNA. You know, I will be back in TNA. Um, and I'm kind of like, eh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it just kind of seems like that's what you always say. But he really is back, you know, um, and in a much larger role. And he's got a program with Eddie Edwards coming up, which, I mean, man, Eddie is, um, we'll get to Eddie Edwards stuff here in a bit, but I'm excited for the Jonathan Gresham thing. I um, I like him a lot. I like him a lot, a lot, a lot. And I think it's someone you want to keep around. So we're going to get into these uh, impact results here. And, you know, I, I usually am able to get through this in about 30 minutes. I don't, I don't go too terribly long with them, especially because I'm recording this on a Tuesday, which, oh, my gosh, you guys know I just hate doing Tuesday podcasts because it's so close to Thursday. But that's the way it be. So um, Eddie Edwards opened up with a match with Delirious. This was OK. Uh, Eddie Edwards. How can I say this nicely? He's out of shape. He looks. He looks out of shape. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's no secret. He's never been a body guy. It's no secret he's been putting on weight over the years. But, like, he came out and he just lo- he looked really out of shape. And, you know, later in the episode, Sammy Callahan comes out. And he's never, obviously, never been a body guy. But he looks out of shape, too. And it just almost seems like... And there's nothing. I'm just got shit i've put on eight pounds since uh uh the summer all right so i have slacked myself and i am a gym goer and all that stuff and and i've i've slacked in my uh my dieting and my working out and everything so i'm by no means trying to say um you know judge them but they don't look in shape um it's part of you know sammy's look was was he was always kind of a bigger dude but it just seems like Eddie is getting bigger by the episode. And um, he's supposed to be one of your top guys. And, you know, someone pointed out in the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook, you know, like, what is there left for him to do in Impact? Like, he's done everything. He's never, he just, he's always been here. He's never gone to the next level. He's never, you know, he, he didn't do anything on AEW when they were doing the, uh, the little cross-promotional stuff. You know, he's never really, he did the, the one NXT match or whatever, but He's just been TNA impact forever. And I think he's comfortable in his role. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. That was just my, that's just what I saw. I, I didn't see uh, when he came, I just didn't see a top guy, you know, and I, and I love Eddie Edwards. I met him several times. Um, you know, he's always been one of my favorites with the company, but I'm just kind of pointing out what I see. And again, I'm going through that myself with my own, uh, my own dieting and everything, but, um, he, he just does not look in shape, uh, and, and like someone at the top of the card 
who could be wrestling for the world title. It just doesn't look how they should they should look. But um, this match was okay. Um, it, it, I like the Boston knee party, and it just doesn't. We don't seem to see the that move anymore. Like it's always the tire driver, which is so similar to the Grace driver and um, whatever other drivers people are using as finishers. So I always liked the Boston knee party just because it was different. You know, mayhem for all. Like these are such similar moves. Obviously, they're different, but they're so similar at the same time. I don't know what the goal is with Delirious and the company. I, I don't know if he's they're keeping him around. They just kind of bring him here or there. I don't really know. But um, decent, decent match to start it off. And these are the times where I feel like they're listening to me because they kick it off. Pretty quick video package. No we on the night. They just get down to business. And it's Eddie, who's, again, one of your bigger stars. Does he look like it right now? In my opinion, no. But uh, but in, in name value, who he is, and that's how you that's how you want to kick off a show. So I think they're, you know, either listening to guys like me and the things we say, or they see stuff like that AEW does, you know, which that's clearly part of their strategy. Quick intro, get to the action with someone people want to see. Um, so after this, uh, he offered to shake Delirious's hand and then uh, takes him out the diehard driver. I for, no, you know, he won with a tap out, right? He, he actually won the match by submission, I believe. He had the diehard driver after, which I think is, again, just so similar to every, a lot of the other moves that we see. Um, Yuya Uemura came out, you know, and then, uh, which is whatever. But then um, Jonathan Gresham comes out. Jonathan Gresham's music hits. And they're going to revisit at hard to kill what the match we were supposed to get him, you know, him and Eddie Edwards. And that probably makes some sense why they didn't really kill off the hard to kill. I'm sorry, not the hard to kill the uh, honor no more thing because they wanted to revisit this. You know, um, I wouldn't be surprised after this match if it becomes the transition for Eddie to become a baby face again, because I just don't see the the interest in him as a heel at this point. Now, when Honor No More was a thing and Honor No More was kind of hot and people were kind of excited for him, then then yeah, you know. But as a as a solo guy, I, I don't really know. I don't I, I don't know if I see it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, you know, shake hands after this and just kind of go back to Eddie before, you know, the way he was. Um, so what did we have? After this, my friends, um, Josh Alexander and uh, Scott Demore backstage. I don't really care about this, but uh, what I do want to say is that these backstage segments look a lot better. They look a lot better. Oh, my God. There's not – and, again, another one of those things where I'm like, do they listen to me? But then I always say no because there's all this we on the night all, all over the place. So I was like, there's no way they listen to me because I've been for two and a half years begging them. But anyway. There's no pink lights, you know, the spirit of Hollywood lights, the orange lights, the green lights, the, the silliness. They're just, it's like all the segments were taking place with good lighting, good natural lighting. Um, and, it, and it just, it looked good. The backstage stuff just looked better. Like a, you guys have had to have seen that. You had to have noticed that. It had to have stood out to you immediately. And there is such a benefit from when you're when you're doing video work to work in areas that have great natural lighting just kind of like if you record you know um i know a few of you out there because a couple of facebook friends with a couple of you guys i know some of you record music you know and i recorded music for 15 or so years and the best sounding audios and and, and just like i said the best visuals are when the source file looks and sounds good. And then when you go in to do the tweaks and the EQs, you're improving instead of correcting. And that's why I think a lot of the shows look so bad and sound so bad is because that initial source looks or sounds like shit. You're either in a hallway with all sorts of echo or you're in a dark 
you know, um, I use the term arena loosely, you know, a dark venue where you have to rely on color correction to make it look good. Or if it doesn't record and sound good, you, re- you have to rely on compression and EQ. And that's why sometimes it looks like shit or sounds like shit. Because just the initial source, the original source is not of good quality. If you record these video segments in an area with great lighting, it, it, here's here's this is an example. You guys are looking at my face right now if you're watching on YouTube. I just have my cell phone light lighting up my face. I'm damn near sitting in the dark. I could take this file, put it in my software. I could lighten it up. I could change the contrast. I could change the levels. And even if I do lighten it, lighten it up, I'm going to lose so much quality that it's going to look like shit. But if I was using a really, really good high quality webcam um, and I had great natural lighting and, and, and had, 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 you know, um, you know, there wasn't, you know, a window behind me. Like I have sometimes during the day where it's that lighting come through. If it's just a, beautiful looking source you go in and you edit and you just make little tweaks and it's sharper and it's better you know i know i'm going on for a long time about that but you just see the difference you see the difference between this and standing in a hallway with the pink lights um you know and i kind of pointed out i mean i don't, I don't want to go on a red light ramp but I, I'm, I'm kind of going to i pointed this out probably six months ago that um my boys, my kids, my sons, my two sons, they have LED lights in their room. So they, they share a larger room. They have LED lights in there because my younger son doesn't really like being in the dark. And they fight every single night over these damn lights because my older son only wants them to be red because red doesn't illuminate the room. They're just red lights. That's it. It's a dark room with red lights. Every other single color or every other single, I think I said that backwards, every single other color on there lights up the room, you know? So that's kind of when you're like relying on all these red lights and everything, they're not, they're not giving you anything to work with. So the, the, the video is dark and then you go into post-production and you're like, well, let me tweak these levels. And that's why it just looks like crap, you know? Um, I, gosh, I feel like I probably talked about that for like 10 minutes. So, um, I apologize, but I just want to make a point. These backstage segments just look much, much better. There was me me and Gia and, uh, I think Gretchen backstage they didn't say anything. We haven't really talked about. Bully Ray has a match with John Schuyler. Uh, they announced that they signed John Schuyler as well. I, I always said, I thought they had something in him. Do I think he's a star main eventer? We ever hold a title? No, I don't think so. But I think he's a good promo. You know, he did a couple promos in the ring. I thought he did a good job. I uh, I think they have something in him, you know, to where he can be a, a good character on the show. But I didn't understand this because he's a heel. Bully Ray's a heel. It was a heel versus heel match. We're not conditioned to care about John Schuyler at this point. We haven't seen him wrestling forever. So I, I just, I hate when heels squash heels. I have hated that since I was a child. Um, some would say I still am a child, but I just don't like that. But a very quick, quick match. Um, and a- afterwards, this segment with Tommy Dreamer, you guys know I cannot stand anything to do with Tommy Dreamer. I really like this. I thought when they came out, uh, Bully calling a Dreamer a jealous coward because he's been the bigger star in every company. And Bully Ray taking it back to, you know, hell yeah, I took out Ace Austin, which is something we kind of forgot about but didn't. Um, I just thought this was really good, and and it was believable. That's why this was good to me. I was listening to the Brace for Impact podcast. They didn't really care for this. I, I do disagree with them on this. I said last week, I don't remember what segment I was talking about, but I was like, this is missing from the show. And anytime I say this is missing from the show, it just means it's so different than anything else that they're doing. It stands out. And this stood out because it was, it was emotional, but it was believable. Like 
when they do the backstage stuff with Eddie and Alicia and she's mad, like that's fake. That's fake wrestling shit, right? Like we know that that's fake. But with this, they're actually, they actually make you believe that they're telling the truth. You know, and these are old school guys. And there are a couple other fat guys on the on the TV screen. So this episode was just like a lot of out of shape people on TV. Well, Bully Ray's not out of shape, but um, I just thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. I was very, I was very like engaged into it. Like I wasn't messing on my phone doing something else. Like I was really listening to this and I was into it. And I say every week that they exceeded my expectations with the Bully Ray thing. And frankly, they needed a storyline like this because they can't who else on the roster right now was going to have a storyline with Josh. That wasn't about like, let's go have a good wrestling match. You know, like if his storyline was with rich Swan, it would just be about, let's go, go have a good wrestling match. I know they're laying the seeds for Steve Macklin and that'll be a good story. I think, I don't know what the story is going to be exactly, but I think that'll be good, but they needed this storyline. So everything negative I said about Bully winning the Collier, I still don't think he should have won the Collier Shot Gauntlet, but the negativity that negative BQ had when that initially ha happened, I kind of take it all back because I've been pretty interested in this. And again, it's 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 just a storyline that's believable and it's not phony fake wrestling. You know, uh, Tommy Dreamer crying, you know, everyone, everyone was so impressed with him crying on, on Q. This was just good shit. Um, is is Tommy Dreamer going to help Bully Ray win the championship? He's going to play some kind of role in this. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but um, this was just good, man. I, I, I don't, you know, give a shit about your mom and all that. Like this was just, this was good stuff. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the whatever. I'm sure they put this clip on YouTube. I wouldn't be surprised if it you know, it has more views than anything else they've been doing recently, but um, I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a backstage uh, segment with Decay and the major players. I think major players continue to be a missed opportunity and it might not be Impact's fault, but it's because, you know, Cardona has never really committed to the company. I've been saying since the beginning that dude will go back to WWE tomorrow. His wife would go back to WWE yesterday. So you don't want to put like too much into it, but that didn't stop NWA from like really pushing him to the forefront and the stuff he does, does in GCW. Like his impact work has been more Zack Ryder than it has been GCW Matt Cardona. You know, it's been more Zack Ryder than it's been NWA Matt Cardona. And that's, those are the kind of things that I don't want to see. Like when someone comes from WWE, I'm not trying to see them relive their WWE gimmicks. Like kind of like you're doing with Heath and Rhino. Like you're trying to catch that lightning in a bottle again. It almost seems like, hey, just be Zack Ryder because we need Zack Ryder on our show. Like you guys actually needed Matt Cardona on your show. Like go all in uh, hardcore legend <laughs> Matt Cardona. You know, that's what I thought they really needed. He's been basically a comedy figure this whole time uh i believe they're going to wrestle for the titles at the pay-per-view i wouldn't be surprised if it's a three or four way match but uh you know they're wrestling for the belts they're probably going to lose and it'll probably be their last time in a company like i think i usually have a pretty decent finger on the pulse where i'm like i think this person's done um i said it with uh chelsea green you know recently when when they dropped the titles. I said, one of those two is out of here. Um, I said it with Tennille Dashwood. I mean, it must've been a couple episodes before she was gone. I was like, it feels like her time is up. It feels like Heath and Rhino's times are up with the company. So we'll see if that's what they do, but I, I really think they're going to, um, they're going to be gone. And then I think major players will be, will be done after this. I'm embarrassed. Cause at one point I tweeted, the major players are going to be the best part of impact going forward. And um, they're not even a part of Impact going forward. Like, it's such a such a minor freaking um, part of the episode. Then we get uh, Crazy Steve's coming down to the ring. I don't even remember if his opponent was in the ring because I was just – was this a match? Yeah, it was Decay. It was like, it was Decay. So I, I got it kind of confused with something from a couple of weeks ago. So Trey Miguel attacked uh, Black Taurus. And it's cool that they're getting a little feud going with Decay because – 
I was pointing out that Decay doesn't beat anybody. You know, um, I think it was good to break Rosemary off them because Rosemary's kind of becoming a comedy character a little bit. And they got to get Decay to a darker place. And I think with Steve and and Black Taurus just by themselves, I think they're able to to get there. Uh, but Steve had to wrestle, you know, the first half of the match by himself. Uh, it was major players versus Decay. And um, these were, I enjoy this because they're four guys I care about. You know, even though I was saying all the things about Decay where I was like, oh, they don't beat anybody. Doesn't mean I don't like them. I don't know if anyone who doesn't like Decay. And then I like the major players a lot. I stand by everything I said that it's a missed opportunity, but that it's been more Zack Ryder than it's been Matt Cardona, you know, character wise. And even, even with the booking, you know, when they first introduced the major players, the next week, W. Morrissey, a.k.a. Big Bill, took them out by himself the next week. So, yeah, enough enough on the uh, the major players. Uh this was another thing that was good with, with again, some good natural lighting. So it looked, it looked cool. And it was Scott Demore uh, presiding over the contract signing for the knockouts world championship backstage with Jordan Grace and Mickey James. They got a nice little story going here. And Tasha Steeles came and said, Hey, you said you were going to wrestle all the knockouts. Da, 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 da. You ain't beat me. I'm the greatest who beat the greatest or whatever she calls herself. And I said the same thing too. I was like, you know, I've been saying that over the last couple of weeks. Like she said, she was going to wrestle a whole knockouts roster and that's not how it's been. It's been, she had a squash match one week and then went right into like this Giselle Shaw, you know, there were so many girls. You can't tell me that this Mickey James storyline wouldn't have been better if she really did wrestle all the knockouts. You know, if she got that tie Valkyrie match and the Rosemary match. Like, you know, I know no one really wants to see her wrestle Alicia except maybe me, but I would have liked to see that match too. It would have just been cool to see her actually wrestle everybody in the division. We would have known she was going to beat them, but if she was wrestling the Rosemary match and the Taya match, like those would be so different than anything else on the show. Cause she hasn't really wrestled those, those girls. So that's what I've really would have liked to see. Um, and you know, they did something sensical here which they don't do this with Josh Alexander, but they, they did this very sensical with Jordan Grace, where Jordan's guys like, whoa, 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 I don't need her wrestling and jeopardizing our match because every Josh Alexander has just defended the title like 50 times in the last four weeks. And right away, you're giving away matches that you really should shave, really should save. But you're also you also know he's not going to lose any of these matches because you're not going to jeopardize the world title picture on the main event at Hard to Kill. You know, like they were going to oh, Speedball Mike Bailey is now going to take on Bully Ray at Hard to Kill. Like we knew that wasn't going to happen, but this was very sensical. Uh, you know, it made sense because you don't want Mickey James wrestling now that she's wrestling for the belt. You don't want her wrestling and and, and possibly losing. Now she's still going to wrestle because she's going to be in a tag team match. What if her tag? team loses you know but it'll be her and jordan versus tasha and savannah evans next week and they actually had something going with savannah evans a little bit and they're not going to win this match this might be the match that breaks them up ultimately i wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did and i think it's very possible that's what they do but it's where it's getting the tag team match and they're going to play up the the narrative can they coexist and that's I'm so tired of that freaking narrative. Uh, that's that's WWE shit. Um, it's not really, really my jam. You feel me? Um, me and me and Gia caught up with uh, Mike Bailey backstage. Again, Mike Bailey should not talk ever. Um, but I'm I'm I like what he's doing with with Kenny King, but like Kenny King's such a good talker, and he's Kenny King hasn't been on the freaking episodes the last two or three weeks he should be carrying this feud you know but we've heard mike bailey talk more over the last couple of weeks than we have kenny king and that's that's not going to get anybody excited um angels i hate god i hate singular names angels took on uh sammy callahan i'm really into the the, the uh the design so far i like him i definitely like him um Diener walks a little too slow to the ring. Like he's, he's almost like at an undertaker pace. 
And uh, thank God the venue's as small as it is because we'd be like still waiting for him to get to the ring. But um, I don't know. For me, he's like walking entirely too slow. And it's really awkward watching Connor and uh, Angels who are walking at a normal because they're not doing the, the hands in front. They're just walking normal. But they're taking like half steps. I mean, it's it's it looks really awkward to me. But um, I, I I hope that they can come up with a cool entrance for them. Like Death Dolls has a cool entrance. I forgot to mention last week when the Death Dolls wrestled, they fucked up the intro because it's Death Dolls and they come out and then they do the stomp and the and the the screen shakes. And last week it was like a, a side shot of Taya's face. When when they were doing the step, and that was it. Like they, the whole presentation of the entrance was completely gone, and I don't know what the hell that was about. But these guys got to come up with like a cool entrance, kind of like House of Black has on AEW. Like they got to have something new and different. But uh, he, he, but he does like maybe I'm like nitpicking, but he like walks entirely too slow for me. Um, but he had a match with Sammy Callahan here. We knew Sammy Callahan was going to win. I don't want Angels to be a, like a jobber. I don't want him to be, be the jobber of the group. I don't think any of them should be like, I think it's, they should just be booked fairly strong, but I'm just such a big Allen angels fan that I, I just don't want to see him just go out there and just lose all the time. Cause he's just an amazing wrestler. Um, and frankly, he's a bigger name than anyone else in that stable uh, at this, you know, juncture in their career. So, um, but, I, but I like the design a lot. Uh, it's going to be great to see how Diener, um, it's a word I'm looking for. Just, just, I don't know. It just, just grows in the role, you know, how, how he develops. That's what I was uh, trying to get at. And, you know, again, like I said, with Eddie Edwards in the beginning of the show, like Sammy looks very comfortable, you know, him and Eddie look very comfortable in their spots on the, on the card. But uh, Sammy Callahan gets the win. And they were talking about this on a uh, brace for impact. Also, Sammy surely is going to get a, a partner here, right? He's got to have somebody. I know in the winter warfare that they got coming up, they'd have the graphic coming out and, and angels and Sammy were wrestling on the same team in a tag team match. So I don't really know what that's about. And, and you guys know my feelings on them announcing the matches ahead of time, because it's, it's giving us chapter seven of the book before we read the first chapter. And in some cases it's given us the last chapter before we even pick up the book period. So uh, I just, I'm not really a big fan of that. I understand they're just trying to like get some buzz to sell tickets, but you know, it, it lets us know, hey, it's a taped phony wrestling show. Um, but but this is a good little feud they got going. So I just want to see who does Sammy, he has to team up with somebody. Like it can't just be one on three forever. Um, he, he's got to have someone. He got to, you know, attack after the match. Like he, he's got to have someone here. It'd be like, you know, I'd love to see Jake Chris come back. Um uh, shit Fulton came back too. like that would that would be pretty cool I know they're not gonna bring Dave I was a big Dave fan when he was a part of the group but I mean that guy has never been seen or heard from again then there was a segment backstage and again another segment that looked good but Giselle Shaw wanted to get back the band back together with Deanna Perrazzo and Deanna says it never was a band Deanna looked good and sounded good here I really like this here and they're gonna team up of course, they're going to wrestle for the titles next week because, God forbid, there's any kind of story here. I mean, why couldn't this just be at the damn pay-per-view or the pre-show to the pay-per-view? Like, why in December um, are we getting this? But I got to say, at the same time, this is usually the time of the month that they start phoning in episodes and, you know, the best of this and, you know, this award and, you know what I mean? They're not doing that shit this year. We're actually getting real episodes, which I think is is beneficial because in the past, you're trying to build a pay-per-view, but then you have no current content to promote. And then the last couple of years, they would do the throwback throwdown and promote the absolute piss out of it for weeks afterwards when you should be promoting Hard to Kill. So it seems like they're doing a better job with that this year. I'm just, I don't understand why this, I, maybe, maybe we'll know after the match Maybe it's a way of getting writing Dion off TV. I, I, I don't really know. Um, but, but of course, we're getting this right away. And the knockouts tag team belts, like, this is not a division that you can just do weekly matches with. 
Like if you wanted to have a, the the uh, digital media championship defended weekly, you could do it. Like there's there's enough people at the bottom of the card fighting for nothing that where you can do that on a weekly basis, but you can't do that with the knockouts tag team championships. You can't have an opponent and then just give away the match the next week. You know, like who the hell were they going to face after this? Um, the only match out there for these girls is versus Allison K and marty bell from nwa like that's it there's nothing interesting out there for these these titles right now so we'll see we'll see we'll see those are those are the home girls so if they uh they ever get a chance at the uh at the impact belts you know who i'm gonna be rooting for they did a looks like taylor wilde getting a little bit of a reboot I'm into it. It's different. Uh, I hope that they change her theme song, which is one of the like bottom three worst in the history of the company. So I would like to see them just completely change her presentation, but I really like Taylor Wilde. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they, um, they do with that. Like she was reading tarot cards and all that. Like it's just interesting. It real interesting. It, it seemed like they've already been doing the groundwork to turn her heel. So We'll see if that's uh, where they're going with it. Then we get uh, Joe Hendry with the Digital Nothing Championship um, and Bupinder Gujar against Johnny Swinger and Ricky Dice. Uh, I mean, Zicky Dice, excuse me. Didn't really care. Um, Johnny Swinger's on his quest to win 50 matches. I would have liked if they... It's fine. I just watched Dumb and Dumber with my old lady last night, oddly enough, but when they were doing, so you're saying there's a chance if he wins 50 matches. Yeah, that's funny. And it's a nice play off an old movie from the nineties, but I wish his goal was actually something attainable, like win 10 matches and you find a way to get him to win 10 matches and then really have a <laughs> world title match. Normally I would not say put a comedy character in a spot like that. I'm not saying to main event a show a pay-per-view or anything like that, but I mean, you can kick off an episode of Impact with a 10 second match with Swinger. And because I do genuinely find him funny, like I would be okay with it, you know? Uh, but the match ends with the gargoyle spear. One of my least favorite moves. Uh, pretty much any finisher in Impact is one of my least favorite moves. I just, no one is, no one is grabbing my attention with their finisher in the company. I just, I just don't see anything cool, you know? Um, there is also backstage here with John Schuyler and Jason Hotch. It was a little odd. Jason Hotch, and I, I said the same thing about, think, about him. I'm like, I think they got something with this guy. And when I say that, it's it's they have some charisma. They have a character, and they can talk. I'm glad that they're putting two, these guys as a tag team. I know Jack Price was the other guy that won it. Uh, tough enough. Tough enough. Um, gut check. He hasn't really had the TV spots, but he did have a, a match with Shira. Uh, before the impact i think they should just team him up with jackson stone and and call it a day you know i, I think um i really think that's what they should do so i'm looking forward to these two because i, I think jason Hotch has shown some potential as a heel but again he wrestled like a heel match uh against what's his name uh trey miguel on, on before the impact last week and then John Schuyler had a heel match, heel versus heel match with Bully Ray. Like, so are they? I hope this is not a, a babyface tag team because that's kind of what it's making it look like. But I think they would just be best served as heels, and it gives them both something to do. Uh, are they going to beat anybody? Probably not, but it gives them both something to do. Steve Macklin, uh, my guy, my guy, my guy, my guy, um, taking on Rich Swan, my other guy, next week. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, my favorite wrestlers in the company for the males are Moose, Rich Swan, and uh, Steve Macklin. So um, I'm really excited for this. Oh, uh, what do we got after this? Sorry, I'm scrolling, looking at the results, and my computer froze on me. So now I'm just kind of babbling until it unfreezes. Okay. Uh, let us know the next week. <laughs> Again, we're getting that tag team title match for the knockout championship right away. Uh, Macklin and Swan. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, Tosh and Savannah versus Mickey and Jordan. So it's a very knockouts heavy show. Impact's able to do that. AEW can't do that. You feature the women too much, like your ratings are going to be in the in the toilet. And then they announce it, Eddie Edwards and um, 
Jonathan Gresham and Wrestle Hard to Kill. I really like these graphics that they got for Hard to Kill, especially Jordan and Mickey's where they're face to face. That one's really, really cool. Uh, Eddie Edwards in his picture is doing the, you know, the face that he does, which I don't understand that. Um, as a heel, I just think he he should have just changed up the presentation a little bit. Like even when he comes down to the ring, it's the same. It's a different music, but it's like the same mannerisms, you know, that he did when he was a babyface almost. But that should be a, a really good match. And then a uh, world tag team match. I'm not going to really – I didn't care a whole lot. Um, but it was Heath and Rhino versus Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, the reason I said I didn't care is because I didn't I, – I don't – ever really care much about what Heath and Rhino do. Heath, if he does some solo stuff, I might be into it a little, but just in general, the team and the former WWE guys, just not really my thing. Motor City Machine Guns, I've been saying, should have won the titles a long time ago. They're clearly going to work toward future uh, towards a future program with uh, Bullet Club. You know, that's I'm sure that's what they're going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have matches in Japan with these guys. Um, cause I think that a new Japan strong championship or champions as well. Right. So they're doing the double champion thing. Cause AEW was doing that for a long time with, uh, FTR, but the team that should be the champions and should have been the champions for a while have them. And, you know, I've given my opinion on this, that Heath and Rhino were once upon a time promised the belts might be, it might even have been in their contract. Uh, it didn't happen due to injury. And then they kind of forced the belts on him. And, you know, I just, you know, it was a short run. That's why I'm just like, you know, the, I think these guys are done. I, I really do. I don't, I don't think we're going to see them um, going forward. They might get like a, a, a rematch or something like that. But I, I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't see him past hard to kill. But uh, Motor City Machine Guns win. They're the new champions. The Bullet Club's the only match out there for them right now. So they have got to, in 2023, beef up this tag team division. Uh, they don't need any new knockouts, but they got to beef up the knockouts tag team division a little bit. They got to, you know, when they first started teaching, the, or teaching, but teasing the titles, every single girl in the roster had a partner. You know, like there was this period of time where everybody had somebody, and now not everyone has somebody, you know, Half the girls have nobody. Um, I think they could get back to that with a little bit of focus to where, you know, it doesn't mean that if you put two girls in, together as a team that they have to be in the title picture. Like, they can just accompany themselves to the ring, you know? Um, kind of like, uh, you know, it was very short-lived, but like Jesse Goddard and uh, Eli Drake used to come down to the ring with each other. They weren't wrestling for the belts, but they were they were a tag team. It was a makeshift team, but they were like supporting each other. You know, they, they were just coming down to the ring with one another. Like you can do that. You can still pair up the knockouts because right now it's put a team together, feud for the title, then find another team to put together. You know, they, they could do so much better with it. But, I, you know, solid episode, solid episode. And, you know, I, I do give them uh, props for not phoning in the episodes at the end of the year. You know, we're almost at the end of 2022. And maybe the last episode of the year is going to be, you know, best of Tickle Dick X Division matches. I, I, I don't really know, but, um, you know, they're doing a good job with it. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, again, I, I, I do apologize for the audio. I mean, not the audio, but the visual. Uh, I'm going to work on improving that lighting the next time you, you see this face. So thanks for checking me out, guys. I'm your boy, BQ. It is the Impact Lounge. Peace.